Hey everyone, John Lorden here with a Brain Scratch Searchlight update. Um, I just got to tell you guys, this one is really tough for me to uh, record. You know, we've these videos are always hard when we have an answer that is not the best answer in these missing persons cases. Um, but there's something about this one, the, the case, there's just so much strangeness around the details of the case. Um, I rewatched the video, the original video that I had done on it today. Uh, this, we're, of course, the case we're talking about is Tiffany Strayling. And just rewatching the video, I was kind of, I almost felt angry just with the amount of information that it seems like is out there that is pointing towards um, really two potential suspects, but one of them being a pretty strong suspect. And of course, I'm talking about, um, if, if you've watched the episode, there's there's a bit of a love triangle that's going on here. Uh, Tiffany had a boyfriend. She had a baby with that boyfriend. Unfortunately, the baby died very young. Uh, and that kind of broke them up, but they stayed close in a way. And then Tiffany started seeing someone else, was planning on moving in with him. And the old boyfriend kind of cropped back up in a really bizarre way. He literally snuck into her house and hid in her closet to try to stop her from moving in with this new boyfriend. The story as we're told about it is um, these boyfriends had a bit of a face off and Tiffany said, you two go work this out. And the two boyfriends drove. Let me pull, pull up a map real quick. Um, supposedly, they drove to some docks here on Snake River, close to uh, Bedke Boulevard. Um, I've kind of looked up and down it. And from what I can see, it's probably where this boat launch area is down here. I can't really see uh, much more that I would consider docks, at least close to where they were living in Burley. Uh, apparently, the two men talked about whatever their issues were. And then um, the new boyfriend dropped off the old boyfriend here at Storybook Park. And let me just get their names so I can... The new boyfriend's name is James McLaws. The former boyfriend was Jordan de Philippus. Now, what's really bizarre about the story is um, we heard from... There, there was a couple of different versions of the story kicking around, but one of the versions that we heard was that Jordan was telling James, the new boyfriend, that, hey, we're still together. We, we we're, st we're still at least romantically involved in some way. And of course, we have to consider, did that anger James to the point of doing something to her? She was about to move into where he was living. Um, that's literally what was going on this day. They were getting stuff from where she was living with her family and taking it over to his place. And then they were supposed to go back to her family's for dinner that night. She never made it back for dinner that night. Uh, James eventually talks to the family. And I even questioned this in the first video, just when did he talk to the family? Because from what the reports are saying, the family didn't learn that she was really missing until about 1030 that night from him. I'm curious if he had checked in with them at any point before that. Uh, the story that he gave is that um, he went back, had a bit of an argument with her, and she walked to a nearby friend's house. This friend supposedly only lived about three blocks away. Um, and then, of course, she went missing from there. The next day, the family goes to try to file a missing persons report, and James has already filed a missing persons report from the night before. So I'm still curious. I still have not found this detail. When did James contact her family? Was it before or after he filed that missing persons report? Because if, it, if he filed that missing persons report without checking in with her family to see if she went back to the place where she was living at literally the day before it makes it extremely suspicious to me. Now, outside of that, um, there was a ton of things that are suspicious about James. He literally said at dinner with her family, uh, I didn't mean to hurt her. Um, there's not a whole lot of additional detail around it, but that is just a bit of a bizarre statement to come out of him. And then he kind of got angry and ended the conversation and left dinner. Uh, of course, he was having other trouble with different charges and he was supposed to wear a police um uh, anklet to keep track of him. He removes the anklet. He goes on the run. He's eventually found. Um, there's just, there's a lot of bizarre behavior here. And even in the original video, I was wondering, 
does is James acting up? Is this normal for him, or is he acting out because he's done something terrible and he just doesn't know how to deal with himself? And unfortunately, um, that brings us to the update that we have to discuss today, uh, starting at kmvt.com. And this was an article from November 17th, but um, the discovery actually happened, I believe, on November 9th, if I'm recalling correctly. A worker found human skeletal remains while they were preparing to dig at a site in rural Jerome County. And if we roll forward to another article at ktvb.com, we get confirmation here that the remains found um, were a missing woman. And of course, um, they are Tiffany Strayling. Jerome County Sh Sheriff Sergeant Chad Kingsland said the remains found in a rural area in the eastern part of the county on November 8th have been identified as belonging to Tiffany Strayling. A cause of death has not been determined. Uh, let's go back to the map just to give you guys some understanding. So according to the boyfriends, uh, we left it at Storybook Park. Um, she was from Burley, so that is here. Now, if we follow this blue line all the way out, we get to the center of Jerome County. Now, they said it was on the east side, and I'm not really sure. I don't think we get really solid county lines here, so it's, it's kind of hard for me to tell. But uh, it could have been a significant uh, amount of miles away, you know, about 40 miles away uh, that she was located. But the authorities are not really releasing the details of where she was located because they believe that that information is critical to their investigation at this point. Uh, let's see what else we can learn about the any details that have been released on this. Starting with how did her family find out about it? Uh, another article at kmvt.com from November 27th. The Strayling family were called to the police station about a week ago while driving back to Burley after laying their, their grandma or her grandma in particular to rest. Tiffany's stepmom, Stephanie, described the timing as a crazy coincidence. Grandma always said that she was going to find Tiffany, Stephanie said. And of course, on the drive back is when they get contacted um, by law enforcement. Here's some comments from her family. It's been a rough couple of weeks, said Tiffany's father, William Strayling. We are doing okay, said Melissa Belt, Tiffany's mother. We are still upset, but we are also relieved that she was found uh, it was really hard not knowing where she was. Now we know. And of course, it was the worst case scenario, but I'm so relieved to at least know where she is now. Uh, the remains were identified through dental records and DNA evidence has been sent to a federal lab for processing, but no clothing or other items were found along with the body. I'm also seeing a lot of, um, a lot of articles saying that it was partial remains that are found. So... It's really tricky when you're looking at a case like this and you have to determine between is the location where they found her, is that where the crime actually happened, or is that just a location where the body was placed? And it's really hard to tell. These articles are literally just coming out over the past few days. But from what I'm seeing, it seems like this is just a location where the body was placed. And I'm really, really curious about why there was no clothing found. I mean, if they had enough of her remains to get a positive confirmation, and obviously, um, if they're saying dental records, then I'm pretty certain they, they have her skull. Um, but they're saying that they don't necessarily have clothing. That is a little strange to me, and it kind of keys me back to one of the stories that um, her new boyfriend, James McLaws, had told about when he went back, or actually before he left with um, her previous boyfriend, Jordan, he said that she told them to go work it out and that she was going to go and take a shower. And frequently, um, I've learned when you're looking into these cases and sometimes with people's statements, if they are lying about something, they'll try to drop elements of the truth in it because then it will back their story and it's also easier for them to remember. And what I'm curious about is that shower and when that shower happened. Did she really go to take that shower when he decided to drive off with Jordan and go have their, their talk? Or when he got home, did they get into an argument? She decided to go take a shower at that point and then possibly he harmed her 
um, possibly took her to this location, and that might explain why she doesn't have any clothing um, when she's found now almost two and a half years later. It's it's just a theory, but it's something that's nagging at me in terms of the stories that we've been told, particularly from James. Of course, his activity after all of this, which if you're looking at it, it, it strikes me as he's acting up. He's acting pretty bizarre. Um, you know, trying to run away from the law, literally going on the run. Uh, thankfully, as far as I know, now he is in prison and he's still supposed to be in prison for a while. I'm hoping that they're able to process this case further. Um, but that is, that's probably the toughest aspect of this for me is the way they're describing it right now with the little information that they have. Um, I don't know what type of testing they're going to be able to do to really produce further results in the investigation here. Um, it's one of those things where, yeah, there are certain things that could have happened to her where if her remains are skeletonized, they can identify those things. For example, uh, if she was choked, they can identify that. Um, if she, of course, had been shot, they can identify that. If she had been stabbed, they might be able to identify that if it marked some of the bones. But outside of those few conditions, um, at least from the cases that I've looked into, there's not a lot else that they can tell when remains have been out there that long. And that's really what I fear. And this actually reminds me a little bit of another case that we covered, the Maricela Garcia case, uh, which I just saw an update on. And basically, um, the update was that there's no update that, you know, they found her remains six months ago. And there's just there's really not much information that they can get from those remains. And they found her remains fairly quickly uh, after she went missing. In this case, we're looking at two and a half years. So I'm just really concerned that there's not a lot that they're going to be able to do to process this case further. And it nags at me because there's so much information um, that you could see that at least came out through the media that really looks like um, both of those men should be looked into. But in particular, uh, James McLaws should be looked into much further for any possible involvement here. Um, I just, for having an answer on this case in terms of where Tiffany is, there are many more pressing questions about what happened to her that I, I, I hope and pray that these answers come. But based on other cases I've seen, I'm extremely skeptical about what they can do here outside of if they happen to get one of these guys to talk. Um, I've even considered the possibility maybe these guys worked together in some way. Maybe they both became annoyed with her and decided to harm her, or maybe it happened in the moment or something. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many different angles that my brain goes to with this case, and it's just really unfortunate because... I mean, at least in one way, her family can now move forward with grieving. Um, you know, they're waiting for the remains to get back to them so they can have a proper memorial service for her. But outside of that, they deserve much better answers than, yeah, we found her and, and here's where she was. They really deserve to know uh, who who put her there and what were the conditions of that. I think they're probably pretty suspect or, or suspicious of James and Jordan in, in probably much the same way I am. They probably have much more information and inside uh, gossip around this and other things like that, that that might even drive them to stronger conclusions on both of these guys or another conclusion entirely. I mean, one thing that we cannot rule out is uh, she did have a little bit of a history of depression. You know, losing a child that that young is certainly going to affect you. But in terms of what she was doing with her life, it seemed like she was trying to take steps forward. You know, moving in with a new boyfriend. They were talking about possibly um, getting married. Uh, I don't know, guys. It's it's really a heartbreaker. I hope I'm wrong about. I just I just. I feel like I don't know that we're going to get the answers in this case. And I really hope I'm wrong about that. I would love to be surprised uh, in this. Um, and every case is its own thing. And maybe law enforcement has uh, some other pieces of the puzzle that they are able to now put together now that they found her. Maybe there will be some type of evidence through forensic testing that comes up um, on her remains that is able to help them put that that case together. Um, 
I don't know. This is just a really hard spot to be in with this case. And it's definitely not the outcome we wanted. And even though we have the answer to where she is, I'm very unsatisfied with everything else that has gone on around this case. And I'm sure her family is too. And of course, my, my heart is broken for them. It's also really driven me to think about how how can you help more in these cases? And it did at least give me some affirmation that raising exposure is a significant part of these cases because more often than not, when someone goes missing for a prolonged period of time and they do wound up with their remains being found, their remains are not found by law enforcement. The remains are found by everyday people, people hiking, people walking their dog. I mean, how many times have I said that on this channel? Someone was walking their dog and they came across remains. So I do believe that raising exposure to the cases, um, because it seems like that's the audience that's finding these people makes sense. I just wish there was something else we can do to get the urgency of these cases handled differently. It just two and a half years it took to get to this answer. And in that two and a half years, evidence was being destroyed in, in many ways. It was naturally de deteriorating, but there's evidence. Uh, people could be covering things up. We might not ever know the true location of the crime at this point. I doubt James still has whatever place he was living at, considering that he's been in jail for more than a year now. Um, was that re-rented to other people? Has that place been cleaned out? Um, was it even forensically processed in the first place? I don't know. Um, I don't know, guys. Really just a tough one. And it's kind of sent me down this path of really racking my brain for how can we do more with these cases. So uh, if you have any suggestions on that, please drop them in the comments below. I'm really, really curious to see what you guys think about that. Uh, we will, of course, stay on top of this case for further updates. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that, that we really get some progress in this case now that she's been found. Um, despite whatever emotional feeling, I'm, I'm definitely recognizing that I'm having an emotional reaction to this. Uh, I hope that there are big steps or, or big news coming about this case. And maybe, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just being a little more pessimistic for some reason today. But this one just really, just really got to me because rewatching that episode, I just, I felt like there was warning flags all over it. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I'm only dealing with this much frustration compared to what her family's dealing with. But that's where I'm at. So that is your update for today on Tiffany's case. Um, once again, my heart goes out to her family and the truths that they're dealing with and the questions that they're still left with. Um, and also, I really hope law enforcement can really still crack this case. I feel like we found her, but this case is certainly not cracked. There's a lot of work that still has to be done. And uh, I'm just hoping that someone is just as eager or anxious to see this truly resolved uh, as me and I'm sure her family are. Thank you so much for joining me today on Brain Scratch Searchlight Update. Um, I don't know. These are the tough episodes, but this is what we do. And I'm really appreciative that so many of you out there care about these cases as much as I do to um, be emotionally invested and to want to see the conclusions to these cases. So uh, I hope this is just a step towards the conclusion. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow on the Lord and Arts channel.